All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about, it's actually going to be the first in a short series of um, videos on efficiency. What, does, what do I mean by efficiency? Uh, what does efficiency mean? Efficiency means you get more miles per gallon, simple as that. And any, any self-respecting engineer type of person, the main concern when you're designing anything or creating something mechanical is the efficiency and they will always, always measure the amount of work you get out, useful work, compared to the amount of energy you put in. In, in our case for a car, it's the fuel. So miles per gallon is the best indicator of uh, how efficient your mechanical system is, your engine, your whole uh, structure, the body, the aerodynamics, the wheels, uh, the resistance. Now in a car, there's not much we can do uh, in terms of changing the design because that's set by the manufacturer. However, there are some things we need to consider. So in this video I'll probably just cover two of the three of the basic ones. Uh, don't have, number one, point one, uh, don't have too much unnecessary load in your car so don't carry a whole load of bulky stuff heavy stuff you know wherever you know work giant toolbox full of lots of uh, uh, metal tons of you know you don't want to carry uh, your three bags of sandbags weighing 20k each uh, I do however must confess I do carry the spare fuel always do um, so the lighter your car the more fuel efficient you'll be. Sometimes you won't be able to help it if you carry passengers. So having passengers in your car will lower the fuel efficiency of your car. No doubt about that. How does it lower the fuel efficiency of your car? How does the increased weight that you are uh, loading on a car increase, decrease the fuel efficiency? Simply, it's down, it'll be down to the, mainly down to the, the bearings of the, of the wheels. And some on the uh, bearings of the uh, motor. Uh, what I mean by the bearings, what I mean by that is as this thing is rotating, as you're moving forward, heat is generated. And the more load you put down on it, the more heat is generated. And that's useless energy, wasteful energy. There is an equation. So... Imagine the quarter of your weight of your car, it's not exactly, but imagine a quarter of your weight of your car is loading down. That means it, the reaction of the uh, floor is pushing back up onto the axle of the, um, or the bearings. And the simple equation is the resistance. It'll be, if you want to go that way, it'll be pulling you that way. So if we just look at the axle of it, the uh, resistance resistance force going that way so that's my front of my car resistance force is equal to a set parameter uh, set constant use the term mule it's like a greek letter multiplied by the reactive force from the ground five hundred kilograms or something if it's five hundred it'll be mu whatever that number is, times that 500, all right? Um, and when I say it'll be mu times, yeah, it'll be, and then 500 kilograms will be the mass, times the uh, gravity, of course, usually about 10. And that gives us 5,000 newtons. If, if mu was 0 0.5, let's say it was, then that would be 0 0.5 times 5,000 newtons which equals uh, 2,500 going the other way. So that you, on each wheel, it'll be 2,500 newtons pulling you when your engine's trying to do the work going forward. So if you was traveling at steady speed, say you was doing 55 miles per hour, uh, that would be what it would be. Your engine will be producing uh, 2,500 times four. So that'll be 10,000 newtons going forward and the 10,000 newtons pulling you back on all four wheels will give you that constant kind of uh, velocity. You'll be traveling at steady speed. 
not going quicker, not going slower, not accelerating, not decelerating. All right, uh, that's what it is really, basically. So if you want to go quicker, you produce more force with the engine, and that'll give you a little bit of acceleration, take you to new hot top speed. But then you you just hold, you just hold that kind of speed, uh, but your engine output be greater because yes, there will be increased uh, increase in waste of energy with the wheels turning quicker. There will be that kind of friction. There will be that kind of waste when the, when the friction is created by the movement of the wheel going quicker. All right? So, so first point, don't overload your car. Always keep, I don't know, the normal fuel cans in there. That's quite heavy, really. I shouldn't really do it, but I do do it. I just have this uh, thing about running out of fuel. All right. Second point. Now, when I said there's very little you can do, in fact, there is some you can do. If if I if I had a feather, this car is not. If I had a feather, a bird's feather, I'll be able to prove something. Look at the surface area of your car. Look at the surface area. Of your car. It is huge, right? Huge meter squared surface area. If I had a feather and I and I dropped it on this car, the car. My, my run around beat up car it'll probably just sit on the surface and not really move right that what's keeping there is friction right if you compared that to my newer car a uh, more cleaner car and also polished car there's less friction there. there's more chance of the feather to just slip off and think about all that air rushing through all that air rushing through and you're going at weather speed what's it in contact with right on your body of your car of course the body of your car if we, remember we, we've got the resistance from the wheel we've also got the resistance from the wind resistance okay uh, a lot of that is like I said you can't do anything about it because it's the shape of the car the design of the car cars used to be like square bricks and uh, they were very very non aerodynamic but modern cars are much more aerodynamic I mean you could you could you could argue that this car is more aerodynamic. It's got like a little point at the front, zooms off, nice little slope. You could say it's a bit blunter at the front. This is less aerodynamic, but you have to put it in a wind tunnel to find out. Obviously, things like rolling down your window is going to decrease your uh, your fuel efficiency because they'll, you'll create kind of turbulent air as it rushes by and it will destroy the what you call the laminar flow of the air as it goes past it's, it's this i promise you the cars have been in wind tunnels and someone has looked at you know okay there's a there's a little turbulent air flowing through there let's do something about it look at my previous honda civic mark that'll be mark, mark nine right here right here someone's just gonna stuck a little tiny kind of uh winglet thing they just glued it on. No, it's about here. Why did they do that? It's it's because they found out. Oh, look, there's a lot of turbulent air there. We're going to lose. We're losing one mile per gallon. Let's just stick something on. They did do that. Have a look. At my previous videos on my Mark Nine uh, Honda Civic. There was a winglet, winglet glued right on there. All right. So they have been designed for that. But however, like I said, number point two in this video. And I'm not sure I'm going to go much further in this video is to keep your car clean and polished now the stuff I found the best absolutely the best let me get the light on for uh, creating that laminar flow in in the uh, car after you've cleaned it is this stuff this stuff here car plan super gloss 10 minute treatment last 12 months no hard rubbing or polishing so what I do is after I clean it I dry it I put this on and it absolutely keeps it really glossy to the touch. Easy to apply, takes some minute, only minutes, locks and shine for up to a year. I do it about twice a year. Use on a car paintwork glass. Yes, you can use it on glass, I vouch for that. Rubber, rubber lights, trim and chrome. You can use it on anything. This stuff is absolutely superb. A bottle will last you uh, probably about five treatments, five full treatments. I use it on absolutely everything. So what I mean by uh, plastic trim, I put it on that and that keeps it shiny. I definitely put it on the lights and it keeps it shiny. 
look, I don't know if you can see the refraction of the light. You see how, how it splits off into the rainbow? Because I, I put this on this, uh, this is plastic, it's not glass. And it's kept it really, really, really nice. Compared to this one, which is, uh, yeah, I have I have polished this until it's absolutely uh, the best it can be, more, most see-through as I can get it. But it was in a bad state when I got it. But look, after all these years, after all this running of, of the car, it's still got that kind of splitting off diffraction and creating a rainbow. Anyway, so you can put it in glass, you can put it on uh, your, your, your lacquer in your car, you can put it on metal, absolutely anything. So two things, don't overload your car. Uh, second thing, clean your car and put something that reduces the friction of the air flowing through it. So you can, you can duplicate that laminar flow that the car is designed for in, in the uh, design part of the uh, Ford or Honda. All right, thanks for watching. I uh, hope that helps to increase your fuel efficiency hit the like, subscribe button, if you think it's worthwhile, leave a comment, uh, discuss anything you want. Uh, that's part one of this one, uh, of this series. I shall post a part two very soon on increasing the efficiency of your car. Don't tell my neighbour, don't let your lights do, end up doing this. Even that, you can hear it, rough to the touch.